friends, it's me, Jonah, and let's thank your inspirations for sponsoring today's tutorial. I'll be showing you how to make my Jonah at my Bernat Alize Jonah's Easy Loop Dog Pillow. Just look at it. Isn't it adorable? And it's so soft and chenille too. And it's so cute. I, I just absolutely think it is adorable. And it has a nice nose, a nice puffy nose with some dimension, a felt triangular nose with the black strands down here of chunky yarn, two nice big floppy ears and a contrasting color, a nice patch around the eye, another ear, of course, another, and then more eyes, another set of eyes, and then a nice classic knit stitch body. And you can't forget, about the adorable little legs there at the bottom. And the yarn you're using that makes this all the more special is the Bernat Alize Blanket Easy Loop Yarn. And because we're using the Easy Loop Yarn, I bet you already know that means no hooks or no needles, so you don't have to worry about grabbing any. All you need are gonna be three balls of your main color. For example, I use three balls of powder pink and then one ball of slate grays. Small quantities of chunky yarn matching the colors you have. Small quantities of white felt and black buttons and a pair of scissors and a darn needle. Okay, so I pulled up my pattern and I have my <clears throat> main color. So let's begin. So you start with the body and then you work two identical pieces for the front and the back of your pillow and then the patch and then the ears and the nose. And then of course the feet, and I'll be taking you through a couple parts of each today, but I'm not gonna go through each and every one because then this tutorial would be hours and hours long and you already have the concept down. So to begin with the body, you're gonna take your tail end to put it out at the right and you're gonna count out 28 loops. And you count them when you lay them straight. But I already have an example done in this color. So I'm just going to do a smaller sample consisting of six loops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'm going to take the seventh loop, push it up through the first. And they go down to the next two. As you can see that they're going to go and meet each other. And create another V. And knit to the next stitch. And the loops are always being pulled from the front. To the back. And of course, it'll take you longer because you'll have 28 loops, not my seven. And then there's your first row. But I do recommend in the first row that you pull a little bit to make sure that they're perfectly straight. And then we're going to work back across and plain knit it. Pull the loop up through the first stitch going in the other direction. Next stitch. Next stitch. Next stitch. I'm gonna pull mine up. And boom. Now you're gonna need to keep knitting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And this pillow is approximately 22 inches square. So you'll be working until yours is approximately 22 inches square. Ending on the second row, which is when you work this direction. And for mine to be approximately square, I'm going to work two more rows because I have to end on my second row repeat. Then we're going to bind off. And what you're going to do is count out your 28 loops. Work 22 inches of classic knitting, bind off, which I'll show you here in just a moment, and repeat that process again for a second back 
and then it'll go right into the eye patch. But I'll make sure that to keep things moving along today so that you don't have to watch a tutorial that's very long. Okay. Boom. I've made my piece a little bigger. Yours will be 22 inches approx by 22 inches long, approximately. So for a bind off, you take your second loop and push it up through your first. And take your third loop and push it up through your second. Take the fourth, push it up through the third, the fifth, up to the fourth, and repeat. Voila. Then you'll just need to snip your yarn and pull up through and repeat that again so you have two bases. Now, what you'll need to do is pause the video, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna go right into our next section, which happens to be the eye patch. Let's get into that right now. So I'm setting this color aside. And bringing out the color I'll be using for my sample. And for my eye patch, I'm gonna work the first three rows with you, and then it's very self explanatory. We're gonna start by counting out 23 loops with the tail ending on the right side, right over here. So we're gonna count out one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. And then your first row, you're just going to knit across. Simplistic, just like you did for the body. Just 23 stitches. Here I am just continuing. So you just knit back across and I'll have a total of 23 loops. I'm up to my final three. Now we're on to our decrease row. So we're going to work a knit stitch to start out with. Then you're going to take the next. I'm going to lay this on flat just to make sure we're on the same page. And I made sure to use the yarn with some transitioning and a little bit of a darker shade so you could really see what I was doing. So you're going to take the next loop of your live loops and put it on top of your next loop, like so. And it's double loop now. And then pull one loop of your working yarn up through both. So now you went from two loops to one. And then next, you're going to just pull up to the next loop. And then again, come through this stitch right here and work another left leaning decrease. And then when you pull up our pattern, we see we do our left leaning decrease, pull the next loop up through the next stitch three times. So we're gonna do, we have our first, we have our decrease, our pull up, our decrease, our pull up, then our decrease and our pull up again. Then we're going to knit four stitches one, two, three, 
four. And then work a decrease again. Boom. One stitch. A decrease. One stitch. A decrease. And the other stitch. Here's my decrease that I just completed. And now we're going in to row number three. And you can see it's already curving a bit. Strategically based on how you're doing three left and three right leaning decreases. So your next row is going to consist of knitting back across. Just simply knitting back through because you want to be able to have your decrease evenly spaced out. And not have it be too sharp or else you won't get a nice rounded patch for your dog for your loop dog and you'll see that this forms right away and pulling through again to finish up my stitch Okay, I'm going to take a moment to pull up my loops, get everything nice and situated. I recommend you do this on a regular basis. And then just pull these loops out so they have a nice curve. You don't want, you want them nice and curved out like a quarter of a circle would be. And you can see how it's swooping, but it's straight on the edges. That's what we want. So now I'm actually, originally I was just going to take you through three rows. But we might as well go through four and possibly five. So next up, we're just going to work one knit stitch. Then we're going to work a left leaning decrease. Pull the yarn up through the next loop. Left leaning decrease. Pull up through the next loop. And then you're going to just knit four times. One, two, three, four. A right leaning decrease. Pull up. A right leaning decrease. Pull up. Let's do row five too before I let you go off on your own for the remaining six. Pull up to make a knit stitch and then keep making your knit stitches for two, three, four, and then stop at five. You need to stop at five. So that it's even. Stop at five. Made, making this very clear. You need to make sure that you do five. And then stop. And then take the second loop. Put it on top of the first. And then take the third loop. And put it on top of both of them. Creating a triple loop. Then pull one loop up through all three to decrease it. And then knit the remaining five you should have five if you don't then you should rip up your work and do it again okay i'm gonna pull up the loops see it's already forming your decreases are so even let's work one more knit through each stitch until you get one away from the middle stitch. You can you should you can mark it. You can see, but it's branching out because it is really bulky and it has three loops hanging on it. So for this next door, you're gonna work four stitches. Hold the next three triple. Pull it up through and it gives you that bulky stitch. 
and knit your remaining four. And boom. Okay, there we go. Now I don't need to take you through the remaining rows because now they're in a point where they're very self-explanatory and I know you'll be able to knock them out yourself. So our next step is going to be hopping right into the ears. And I'm going to start you out on the ears since I think it's a very important part. And then I'm going to let you go on your own. And then work a few more rows and then show you how to end it. But I'll let the seaming of the ears up to you. Because that's very self-explanatory. But we'll go over the feet and the snout too. And then of course all your finishing touches and sewing it up. Now, grab your whatever color you would like. You can start with your main color. Or you can go with, so, okay, I should rephrase that. You'll have one ear with your main color, and then one ear with your co contrast color, A. And for demonstration purposes, I'll be using my darker slate gray mix. Let's get it all set up. Here we go. And just find the end. And for the ears, you're going to want to take your scissors and snip a strand, snip the base of the loop so you have at least three inch strand. I like to go a little longer because I use the same strand to sew it up and sew it on to my dog. And then you're going to cut out eight loops. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And tie a little knot between the eighth and the ninth loop. And then knit each stitch just working in the round. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, then you can just pull it down, and I'm going to let you know, I like to use this tail as a stitch marker, and then I unravel it and pull it back down here for sewing. It's a really good idea. Okay, and then we're going to next... Just work another row of knit around and then just put your strand up one to mark it and you'll put it down one to mark it so you'll just use that strand to mark your rows and then once the strand length runs out you'll need to get another strand okay mark my strand through here then i'm going to do this row with you and then row four and you'll be off on your way because it remains the same. You just have to do a couple more increases. So you're going to start by pulling up the first loop from your working yarn. Pulling up the next loop to create a knit stitch. Making it an increase by pulling two loops up through working yarn. Two stitches. Two loops, two solid stitches, and boom, we're back here. And then next up, if I let you go off on your own, let's do a row of knits together for row four, which is where you repeat round two, which is where you just knit. knit okay and i'm going to show you i like to just trace my strand back and then i use that to sew it up later but what i'm going to do now with you on camera is i'm just going to work through some more rows so i can show you what it's like when we're actually going to physically seam it together but what you're going to need to do 
is continuously decreases with the pattern that I've linked to below, of course. And continue making your increases until you reach your ninth row. And then you'll just keep knitting around and around and around until you have anywhere from 20 to 22. It depends on if you want yours a little longer or a little shorter. Because you'll certainly have enough yarn with your one ball. So I'm just going to continue knitting around so I can get a more substantial piece. Even though yours will go wider because you'll be doing more increased rows. Okay, now we can do our seaming. So you're going to fold it in half on the seam line, like right here. And then hold these two loops right here. And pull the next strand up through. Pull the next two together. Pull up a loop up through both. A next strand and a loop up through both. And repeat. Then you're going to knit, 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 and knit. And would you look at that? You have a solid bind off. And now just take your strand and loop it around and around and around and there you go just keep doing that then you'll be finished and you can sew it on very self-explanatory on my ipad right here i'm going to blow up the diagram that's in the bottom left corner of page four of the Joni easy loop dog pillow and you can see how you're going to sew it so you're going to have the body of course now, I'm not going to show you how to sew on the eye patch because that's very self-explanatory. Just put the yarn through, back up, and down, however you'd like. There's no specific way to do it. You can see how it's going to be sewn on, though. You can see how the ears are going to be sewn on. They're going to be sewn on like this. Then they're going to fold down and flap down like a dog's ears will flap down. This kind of dog, anyway. And then you're, we're going to make the eyes out of felt with a button. But I'll leave that up to you because I'm not here to teach you how to cut the felt and glue on a button. And then you'll need to make a snout, which I will take you through how to do that. And then I'll leave the cutting the felt up to you. And I'll show you how to do this little black strand here. And then we're also going to do the feet together. So now I'm going to set this aside. And we're going to get into the feet right now. Because what we're going to need to do is work it on the front base and then we'll work around it and team it up together. Okay, so I'm back and I already have both of my sections done. But for this one right here, I do have one of the legs on, but we're going to go and put on the others. So as you can see, you're going to start by coming in and making sure that you are joining in the fourth stitch in the center, which is one, two, three, four. I, my bad, the corner. So one, and then pull up six loops. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And as you can see, I've completed my first row. And now I'm going to knit back across row number two. Then I'm going to knit back, knit back across, and bind off. And then we're going to do the nose. And then you'll be all set to go. And I'm going to leave the felt and all of those things up to you 
just to do extra on your own. Pulling up through, pulling up through, pulling up through. Come down, come down, pull it up through here. And then you sweep it back and forth through. And then into the snot we go. So we're gonna scroll down in our pattern. And we'll have to cut ourselves a length. Okay, we're going to count five loops or foundation. Tie the tail between the fifth and the sixth. And then continue to stitch around. One loop each time. And then the other thing I wanted to do is do the rest is self-explanatory. I don't want to keep you here too long and bore you, so I just wanted to show you how to loop your yarn around like so. Just loop it around five times. Push it down the center here because you don't want this big ugly hole in the center of your nose. So you wrap it around. You push it down, then you're gonna pull tight. Nice and tight. And look, it cinched it up, so keep on. So keep following the directions. And I actually already have a snare at work for you, so you can see what it looked like once you're complete. So you lay it flat like this, and then you'll keep working on top and starting with an increase. And then continue moving each way around according to the snout part of the pattern right here. And it's so important that you start by cutting yourself a tail. So I'm going to grab my snout. And then we're going to move right on to our next step. Okay. So I've got my snout. And here it is. All nice and finished and very balanced. And our next step is going to be sewing, because you've done everything else. You've done the ears, the feet, the snout, everything else. You just got to attach them. You know, I worked some of the magic of this project ahead of time, so it would be better for the tutorial's sake. And look at this. Okay, boom, get the... Look at that. Hope it gets really big. Hope you can get it all in there. You got the adorable little feet, the body, and I did mine in this powdered pink and oh, so soft and squishy. And then you got your snout to put on. Gotta pop it on right in the center here. And make sure not to distort it right in the center here. And then be very careful. I'm doing this live so you can see. Okay, you can see there on your end. Make it nice and puffy. And now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Right there so you can see this easier. And take my yarn strand. And okay, before you start, I'm going to reiterate how important the snout is. A bad snout on this pillow, if everything else is done correctly, will be your enemy. A bad snout is your pet is your pet peeve when it comes to this project. Pet peeve. Okay, pull it back down through. And another good idea 
is why I just sewed this on here to show you. Is that you can make this in the colors of what the kind of pets you have. I'll be making another one with a cream and then a black shadow for one of my dogs. And his name's Charlie. And then... I think I'll be making another one with the with the color sand varg with a with maybe some hints of a brown in there too for my other dog Bella who's a Yorkie too. Just take your time getting this nice and straight and even. And don't go through every stitch. That's not necessary when you're doing this. And we're going to go carefully chasing our hand underneath, locking the stitch in, pushing it down through, estimating where the next one will want to come out, and then puffing it back up to see if you're on location. I always type it off. I'm going to slide it back underneath, push it around, push it straight back down, following it back through. I'll need to put a stitch right here. You can approximately go in a circle. I like to take my base and use that as my guide. And then once we do it, you don't, of course the one you notice is probably so we push it down like this and it makes the perfect 3D texture element. Oh, this yarn's so squishy. Pull it up through. And stirred it down. There we go. You can really see it forming already. I don't know. I'm just going to reiterate again. The snout is so important, so take your time. Push it back down through. Catching both loops. Take your time. Oh, okay, so we're just going to keep going around quick. And then I'm just going to quick start by sewing it with you. And then I'll finish it up off camera and get my little strand around the nose and everything else. Then I'll meet you back here. And I have a couple other things to say to you before we go. But before I stop the video, I'm going to, of course, quick finish up the nose with you. By pushing it back down through. Down through, up and back through, and then pull it straight like this, and then just flatten it down, and then take that strand and push it around back, and then And then you're all set to go. I just want to reiterate one thing again, and then I'll be back and I'm going to show you, is that I'm now going to take my two sides, keep them with the wrong sides on top of each other, like so, and I'm just going to put the edges together and whip stitch them with pink yarn. And then once I get three sides done, I'm going to insert the pillow and whip stitch the rest of it up. And then I'll meet you back here once you're finished with that. I hope you loved making this loop dog pillow with me. I really enjoyed it. And it's such a fun project and it works up so quick because it uses that soft and cuddly chenille Bernat Easy Loop yarn. And I really hope that you'll do it in different color combinations because I had the idea to do the color combination of doing a cream for the body and then a black shadow instead of slate grays for the patch and the ear and the feet. Because that's kind of what one of my dogs, Charlie, who's a teddy bear, looks like. But make sure to tag your inspirations if you'd like to post so I can see what, you're, what colors you're making. Mm -hmm.